in there. No, just can uh, you no. give me a yeah? Can you like <laughs> what? What? No, look, you know, the, the, I don't think they're still talking about the nonsense that with Debo trying to choke out the long snap or whatever the case may be. <laughs> right there. Say, Saber Pepper. When the reality is that he should have punched Moody in the face, not the long snap. The long snap didn't miss a kick. Moody missed three of them. They have to win the game. Right, it'd be nice for us to see San Fran kind of cooking on all cylinders. We haven't seen that yet in a single game yeah. this year. Yeah. Uh, but now the McCaffrey's back week two, and he had 100 yards last week. I think we start seeing the offense that we all fell in love with over the last right. couple of years. But look, uh, no one's going to argue with me on this. They are better than Seattle. They are going to beat Seattle. The only question is by how much. And then it's going to be an interesting two-horse race between them and Arizona for the division. Yeah, this is a must-win. They've already lost to the Cardinals and Rams, and now you're playing another in-division opponent. I think if you're the Niners, you have to somehow get back to how what we saw from last year, be, the big explosive plays, playing big on defense, being that juggernaut of a team they were. If they can get back to that, then we'll see. But right now, the schedule, look at this. I mean, this is their playoff picture. But right now, the schedule for the Niners gets gets, it gets hard after this. Yeah, game. but they got a gift last night. You know, Washington losing was good for them because the Eagles not run away with the NFC East. So now Washington's battling a team like San Francisco in the moment for the wild card spot. I, we've all said a million times, we all believe they're going to win the division. But you got to beat Seattle for the second time. But after to this start game, laying claim to, we are the team. Right. You guys thought we were back here. In here's why it's important. Here's why the blowout is important, okay, for you as a football team. Yeah. And you know this being in a locker room, right? If you don't blow them out, if it's a close game, you know what? There's still going to be questions <coughs> in that locker room about, hey, the, the, the Pepper Debo issue, you know, the sideline dust up. There's going to be issues and questions about your red zone, your inefficiency in the red zone. There's good. And one of the great things, or one of the things that just wear you down, is having to hide from the media, having to hide in the training room, Man. having to avoid it because you don't want to talk about it because everybody's going to ask you about it. So a blowout would just be like one of those things that would take all that pressure and all that junk and all that garbage that you don't want to deal with as a player. It takes it off the plate. You don't have to deal with it anymore. Style points normally don't matter much in the NFL, but I obviously hear what you're saying. They, they've erased their margin of error. Because of those losses that you're talking yes. about, Willie. Because in the NFC, because of how good the conference is, because of Washington, because of Minnesota, because of Green Bay, it's really one path for the Niners as of now to get into the playoffs. They have to win their division. So they have to catch Arizona. Obviously, they could make the wild card, right? They're only one spot out of it. But the cleanest path for them is overtaking Arizona. So they can't lose another divisional game if they're trying to get there. And I'll just push back a little bit to what Craig said. Like, yeah. You're right, we haven't seen a completely total dominant game, but one that was pretty close was when they played Seattle a month ago. Yeah. Now, Seattle scored 24 points in the game, but it was 36-24. Seattle turned it over three times. The Niners had nearly 500 yards of offense. They had over 200 rushing yards, and that was without McCaffrey, and they stalled out in the red zone a couple of times. Like right. That game felt like the Niners could have scored 50. You know, the other crazy thing, can you guys put the schedule back up just for one second? And I'm not sure why you know, I, I didn't pay more attention to this. They have, well, I guess the bye counts. They have won back-to-back -back games. Uh, they haven't won games in consecutive weeks yet this year. So I'm, kinda, I'm getting a little cute with that because the bye <laughs> yeah, right. was there. Yeah. But, you know, this team needs to go on a run. Correct. And the problem with that is, you know, Seattle's one thing. I, I think they'll beat Seattle handily. Right. But then you've got a really good Green Bay team at Lambeau Field. And then you've got the Bills after that. All the way across the country. Right. So cool. all of a sudden, a team that needs to put together three, four, five consecutive wins just to stay pace right. with either Washington or to try to eventually leapfrog over Arizona. They're a half game back right now against Arizona. The schedule makes that very hard to do. I, I, well, still, can, I still consider the Niners – a Super Bowl contender. No, like, wow. not I, right now. I, I do, well, well, it's pro, it's projection. It's that they are second in the NFL in yards per game. Sure. Their offense has been elite. They just haven't scored at well, that. that point. matters. No, no, it definitely matters. But I, I'm assuming that Christian McCaffrey solves that problem for them. Right, they're like ninth, tenth in scoring, but they're second. Well, but so eventually, back, eventually, you're right, and, but eventually you have to start scoring. Right, I, that, last week they were this one for three in the red zone with McCaffrey back. Correct. They've got to start, but you can, you can. I mean, you won a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes. You can comment on what it's like to be in that locker room when people are nitpicking, people are talking, people are asking the questions that you just flat don't want to answer.
Yeah, you don't want to answer them because it takes away from the overall goal. And I think right now, what, what we have to take away from last week, especially against the Bucks. I mean, now if they would have lost to the Bucks, that would have been catastrophic. They would have been four and five. Now you're talking about a team right now going into Seattle. <laughs> For, not only right. trying to win, but to save their season. Can you talk about Green Bay, Seattle? The only weak spot in that whole schedule going ahead is the Bears. So if you're Purdy right now, you don't need the extra distractions, especially talking about a long snapper who you don't really right. have into any 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 relationship. The, the long snapper became a household name, and that won't happen ever again. But I will say this, because the game is in San Francisco, uh, so it's a home game, a chance to win. What should be an easy win for them? All eyes are going to be on Debo. Because if at any point before San Fran runs away with it, which I think they will, God forbid Debo Samuel drops a ball on third and six and they have to punt. Because I know exactly what the Fox cameras well, should do uh, and right. what they're going to do. Where's the long snap? Right. right? That's, you know what? what, you you know what? Yeah. So, well, yeah. first off, I'm glad you asked me that question. Uh, I believe that I'm a man. A man's man, some might say. <laughs> dude, if a dude... Grabs me by the throat. I, you're not going to hear words, right? Yeah. Where do you come from? We're going to be fighting. Right. Sure. If a dude grabbed you by the throat <laughs> the way he did, yeah. it, it's go time. <laughs> right? Now, I might get my ass kicked, but when I wake up in, from that coma, they're going to be like, yo, you're a man. <laughs> I wish. I, I just wish. You know what I wish? I wish yeah. you were yeah. the deep snapper this weekend yeah. for San Francisco, and they don't produce in the red zone, and oh, Debo man. drops that ball because yeah. you would go after it. Dude, I would because I'm vindictive. Yes. Yeah. My, ther- the my therapist says it's the last bit of my salvation. I need to drop that. <laughs> but if you grab me by the throat and embarrass me, and i got to save your ass by you know, kicking another field goal because you had a drop, I'm all about it. Well, I, I, the San Francisco 49ers are five-and-a-half-point favorites <laughs> in that game, which takes us to the guy who has just been absolutely unbelievable. It's Parkins Picks. Danny, take it away. Oh, it is time for Parkins Picks. <laughs> Big money. <laughs> the best pick segment anywhere. Another 3-0 and week. And like I always say, guys, 3-0 and weeks don't change me. No. I'm the same person that I've always been. TV hasn't changed me. 21 and 11 against the spread doesn't change me. I'm the same guy. I mean, those were all. Which one was the easiest cover? I don't know. Easy, easy, easy. 21 and 11. I'm seeing the NFL very clearly. Let's get to week 11 of Parkins Picks. Eat your heart out, Colin Coward in the Blazing Five, and Nick Wright with Nick's Picks. This is the official pick segment of Fox Sports One. To week 11. And the game of the week. I was on the Bills last week. I'm on the other side this week. Your Kansas City Chiefs. This is easy, fellas. Patrick Mahomes as an underdog. It's outright disrespect. The guy is underdog in a playoff game. He's underdog in a regular season game. He's already the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. He somehow is better when he is supposed to lose. It doesn't make any sense. I have no idea why an injured Buffalo team is favored by, what did I get, two and a half? Two and a half points. I'll take two. I'll take one. Greatest I'll I've ever zero. seen. I, watched, <laughs> I don't know. Did you guys watch Tom Brady? I didn't watch Tom Brady. No, that's he's certainly the most talented quarterback we've ever seen, and he's coming for Tom Brady's throne. Speaking of thrones, nice again, yes. no, no, nothing, nothing's right. changed. No, nothing. <laughs> no, 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 nothing has changed. The second pick, another huge game. I'm not scared of picking big games. The Baltimore Ravens are in a different class, a team, than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. I said it to you about Thursday night football. Everyone's like, oh, these teams are so close because of their record and they play in the division and history blah 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 no the Baltimore Ravens will win this game by double digits Pittsburgh (laughs) has not played great quarterbacks this year we can just look at Pittsburgh's schedule week one Kirk Cousins coming off the injury Bo Nix second game of his career Chargers when they were only running the ball they lost to Anthony Richardson and Dak Prescott then congratulations on all your success of beating Aiden O'Connell Aaron Rodgers and Danny Dimes This is a team that, frankly, is good, but not great. Baltimore wins the game comfortably. And then we were just talking about it. San Francisco covers the number here. I've been on this team all year. They're the sixth-ranked team in post position. People, you're too high on the Niners. You're too high on the Niners. No, they're an elite offense that now is getting Christian McCaffrey back. They covered six and a half against Seattle four weeks ago when they didn't have McCaffrey. They'll have no problem covering there. And Brock Purdy, I mean, my God, I've always been a Brock Purdy guy. Everyone knows that. (laughs) When he he plays the Seahawks, he's just absolutely money. So it feels to me like this will be my third 3-0 week in the last four. You know, 3-0. Nothing has changed. I do know one thing. The last time you dressed up after a 3-0 week, I think you went 1-2. 
Okay, oh. right. Yeah, yeah, because, oh. Nick, oh. My, because Nick Sirianni was up 22-0 and somehow didn't cover the spread. That was not yeah. on me. That was on Nick Sirianni. It was on the right side of that game. I'm just Seeing the NFL, very good. Since you never change, what do you do for Halloween? <laughs> you dress up as a banana. Yeah, yeah. I was a banana. Aren't you paying attention? So write those down, parlay them, bet them every which way. Another 3 0 week. Certainly another winning week coming. Oh, let's go. All right. Hey. 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 Uh, there it is. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it hey, rain. coming up. Hey, then, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.